Alpha, what's your status? We're in. Your order, sir. Locate the target and eliminate it. Welcome back everyone, this is Hungry Trash Panda. I'm bringing you some news on Dying Light. Dying Light has received its first DLC of its promised 10 DLCs in the next 12 months. Not in the next 12 months, but in 12 months. If you didn't know, they have a 10 in 12 program, which is 10 free DLCs in 12 months. And those DLCs are gonna include brand new locations, mechanics, weapons, enemies, and story-driven quests alongside gameplay improvements, balance tweaks, and exclusive content for our most dedicated fans. And that's quoted directly from their website. So we'll be seeing all of that pretty soon in the DLCs to come. Now they're calling them DLCs, but the way this first one came on, it is actually an update to the game and is not considered a DLC. It's not listed on your DLC roster. So I'm just gonna break down what the update brings so you know what to expect and how to do all the stuff or what it does or how to get it. So first things first, the new heavy armed enemies in Old Town, specifically only in Old Town. It is essentially a new faction that are supposed to be stronger, more dangerous than your average Rise thug. In my experience, I've only encountered them in the many hostage situations that you get as random events. That's really the only time I've seen them. I thought they would be roaming around a lot more, but that may be a difference of difficulty level too, possibly. They do seem to be stronger. They did manage to down me pretty quickly when I encountered them once. Their presence is definitely not as great as I thought it would be. But these are really just first impressions. Like I said, difficulty may play a part or even location within Old Town. Having a slightly different variety in enemies is always welcome. So that's nice. Next thing to touch on is the new military outfit for Mr. Crane. Pretty simple. Collect requisition packs that you get from the new enemy soldiers and you'll eventually unlock the new outfit. It really says it right there in the trailer, but just in case you didn't quite catch that, that's how it's gonna work. I personally did not grind the requisition packs in order to unlock the outfit because it's another outfit and I'm just like meh. Maybe if it was outrageously cool then yeah, I would have sat there and grinded to get it, but meh. And eventually if you just kept playing you would unlock it anyways. Next up is the new zombie mutation, the mutated goon. This really just feels like a reskin. I, I didn't notice any differences while fighting them. They behave just like all the other big dudes with hammers. And the way they made it sound in the trailer was that it was supposed to be like a rare spawn or something in Old Town. But it's really not. It's just a reskin and all of the big dudes you're gonna find are now gonna be the mutated goons. Which is quite unfortunate, but more variety, I guess. They go down just as quickly as they always did, but then again, the crossbow is overpowered, especially if you land that headshot. And lastly, the Haran military rifle, which you get for free when you sign up at Gemli, which you don't necessarily need to sign up for because you can just sign in with your Techland account. And in case you wanted to know what the relationship between Gemli and Techland is, Gemli is Techland's dedicated digital platform created to bring players, developers, and publishers together. It is a single integrated community hub offering players exclusive offers, news, and content not available anywhere else. 
that was quoted directly from the Dying Light website. Now, in my opinion, Gemly is kind of like another Steam. They offer digital products, digital games, and they have sales on those games. Anywho, so when you do that with Gemly, you will get the Haran military rifle, but you will not get it awarded physically in game as an item. It's you don't get it from your quartermaster. You're not going to find it in your stash. It is delivered to you as a blueprint. You just need a rifle of any kind and a tiny bit of resources. You got yourself a new skinned assault rifle with slightly better stats. And you can have different versions of the same rifle. So it'll still be the Haran military rifle. But if you use it with the police rifle as opposed to the military rifle, it's going to have different stats. Not to mention one is single fire and the other is automatic. So that's kind of cool. But they're all going to look the same. Sorry. The better stats are nice, but it's a very, very tiny upgrade. In my opinion, it still doesn't compete with the raw damage of the crossbow, especially if you have all those survival levels invested in your crossbow. But I will say that assault rifles are still the best human counter. And who doesn't want another new gun? Variety is a good thing. Despite some of these things seeming less potent than they were portrayed, it's still a great excuse to pick up dying lights and jump back in and kill some zombies. Because Dying Light is just a fun game. It really is, and one of my absolute favorites. I can't wait for Dying Light 2 to come out. Oh, and in case you wanted to visit the location that they show in the trailer, thinking that it's going to be some sort of stronghold, it's not. Just an empty, barren wasteland. It was just a staging area. There's nothing there. I was really hoping there would be something there that you could raid every now and then. I thought that would have been nice, but no. It was quite confusing when I was trying to locate this location because the way the trailer makes it look, it looks like it's on the south side of the map when actually it's on the north side of the map. So I was thinking that it was the museum, which you actually go to in parts of the quest and do all this crazy stuff. And anyways, it's not. That's gonna do it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you all in the next one. And as always, stay awesome.